about the opposite end of the spectrum? What are the things that we're doing that are l literally making us older besides stress, as you've already mentioned? Well, yeah. So what do we what do we add and what do we take out to our lifestyle? Uh, certainly, just as you talked about earlier, sugar is, is, is profoundly pro-aging. There's no doubt about it. Sugar, simple sugar, processed foods, all of it. You know, the modern lifestyle is a pro-aging lifestyle. I mean, I said earlier, we're aging faster in this country, you know, than, than the elsewhere in the globe. Um, you know, we live this modern sedentary lifestyle. We sit on, you know, we sit at our office chairs all day and um, eat processed foods. We were just not designed to live that way. So this is, you know, our program is a little bit more from where we came, you know, a little bit more how we were designed. So you want to avoid the standard American diet big time. You want to avoid the sedentary habits that we've adopted. Um, you can see in the back there that I use my treadmill desk. <laughs> I use it often. And um, if I didn't have my little pod and lights set up over here, I would be on that so I could get a little bit of movement each day in my um, work day. Um, well, so and even I'm over here sitting on my bouncy ball so that at least I have to hold my own body weight. I, my core has to hold my body It has to up. be engaged. Yeah, I have, I have a... Um, I have a wobbly chair. I don't know what, I don't remember what the brand is, but it, there's, it, it, you'll, there requires some core engagement. Yeah. And that's pretty easy. Like this is a comfortable chair, you know, and I know Ken Litwin, my colleague here in the clinic uses a bouncy ball too, when he's, when he's not seeing patients. So there's a, there's a lot we can do. In fact, I was just talking on another, I was talking to a producer of a show, getting ready to go on a show. And he was talking about having a little um, sort of bike pedal underneath his desk. So there are, there's many solutions out there to get us moving. I'm on the fourth floor and I'll run downstairs and run upstairs sometimes between um, things that I'm doing. So exercise is very essential. Addressing our stress is exquisitely important. You know, avoiding the standard American diet um, and, and really trying to get enough sleep. Like, like sleeping was, well, continues to be probably my weakest link in all of these. Um, I've got a toddler at home who wakes up still quite a bit and um, I need to be able to fall back asleep. I need to be able to go to sleep efficiently. And um, as I say in the book, I, I really uh, focused on sleeping like I was training for a marathon because, man, I had some serious insomnia for a, a chunk of time and it just felt it felt deadly. So the sleep section is um, I think helpful. It's full of really useful hacks. And then I, you know, talk about some of the background science on how damaging it is. We've had Dr. Sarah Gottfried on the show and she talks about how sleep is basically a savings account. You are saving for your future by how much you're willing to invest in good sleep habits. And Dr. Zeke Medina came on and we've talked about how we just we're so bad. We are so bad at crafting good, good sleep routines. And so talk to us. We touched a little bit on inflammation, but stress causes inflammation. Lack of sleep causes inflammation. The standard American diet causes inflammation. Is inflammation really what is causing aging to happen? Inflammation, you know, as they call it. I So you know, this goes to the sort of the first, <clears throat> the first, um, excuse me, uh, <clears throat> I'm drinking this, um, this awesome golden milk, this turmeric golden milk, and it's just a little bit grainy and sometimes it gets stuck, but it's good. It's full of turmeric. Yeah, and I, know, I was about to say, just put some turmeric in it. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's delicious. Um, inflammation <clears throat> drives aging, but you know, what what and 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 all of those things you just said cause inflammation. Um, I think so. Inflammation is a huge fundamental player in the aging journey. I think if we go even deeper than that, we're still going to see dysregulation of DNA methylation. And there are two animal studies out that sort of argue this point. Um, they're both out of David Sinclair's lab at Harvard. And 
in one study, they caused a age-related optic neuropathy in mice. Um, so that the mice, mice, mice vision was old. They made it old. And then they reversed it by cleaning up DNA methylation. So changing gene expression via DNA methylation and demethylation, so adding and subtracting methyl donors on the DNA, corrected their vision so they could see again and made their optic neurons younger, youthful. Mm -hmm. So, so that would suggest that it's there at gene expression as the, the most root cause. And then it kind of trickles down and influences inflammation. And then there's the, you know, end organ damage. And then they did another interesting study where they changed, they, they made mice old by this epigenetic dysregulation. So this DNA methylation dysregulation, and then made them young by correcting DNA methylation. I mean, that's pretty crazy. When you look at what is old, of course, inflammation is fundamental to that process. So I don't know if that makes sense, but what I'm positing here is that there's a very root cause and a very upstream approach that we can be thinking about and maybe very important for us to think about. Um, and that is, again, going right to the heart of gene expression. I think one of the rather extraordinary things, if I do say so, about our, 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 our diet, our, our program is that's what we were sort of betting on, the fundamental importance of really massaging um, gene expression. Like we sort of went right to that as, as the source. It's we didn't know when we started our study that we would reverse biological age. In fact, it wasn't, I didn't, I, at that time, and it wasn't that long ago, we started our study design in 2017, nothing had been published on biological age reversal. It was not thought to be possible. Oh, and I'm... by the time, by the time that we published our study, there were only four and we're the first control study. So to say that it's not, it's, I mean, it's, it's an extraordinary time. And I know you're, you're shaking your head and saying, well, we see this in functional medicine all the time, but we didn't know that we were changing gene expression, you know, at the level of DNA methylation. I mean, we're in a new era. Like we see that we get people better um, with our approach, like almost miraculously. So sometimes, um, but to have the tools to actually look and measure what's going on at the level of genetic expression is sort of a, it's a game changer.